Hey, good morning, everyone. How's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a 2011 Honda Pilot. It was actually towed in at the end of the day yesterday. And um, the customer's complaint is it's running terrible and it has a misfire. So all I did so far was I got in it, turned the key to the run position, hooked my scanner up just so I could scan it for codes. So far, what I'm seeing is permanent codes. It's got 420, 430 for CAT efficiency, bank one, bank two. It's got misfire cylinder number two. Um, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to let the scanner run its way through, and then I'm going to look at all the codes. So there you can see. That's what I'm seeing right now. And it's got 113,000 miles on it. Now what I found on these Hondas with the V6, any Honda in, in general, I don't know what it is, but I've seen it. It's not on every single one. But when you have an odd misfire situation that you can't, like, say, hey, you got a bad coil, got a bad plug, something like that. You got an odd misfire situation, adjust the valves. I have found that the valve adjustment gets tight on these things, like the valve seats sink into the head over a period of time. Not that there's anything bad that happens other than, like, a misfire happens. But this being cylinder number two, I'm thinking it's going to be something more. Um, or not something more, but something like like a bad plug, bad injector, bad coil, something along those lines. But then it's got the cat efficiency bank one and bank two. I don't know. So we're going to have to look into that and see what that is. But this is almost done with its scan. It's at 80%. So, all right, let me let this finish up and then we'll get back to this. Okay, so just finished. That took like another three minutes to go from 80% to, to done. Um, so anyway, permanent codes three is the cat efficiency, bank one, bank two, and cylinder misfire number two. So then we have temporary codes, which cylinder number two misfire. Not worried about tire pressures. Not really worried about that just yet. Battery voltage failure. That's interesting. So none of that's going to cause running issues. Problem in HVAC, I'm not going to worry about any of that. Yeah, not worried about any of that. What I'm worried about is the running problem. And a lot of these codes just repeat over and over again. Those are OBD, OBD codes. So, all right, so we are going to be concerned with the cylinder number two misfire. All right, so let's start it up. Oh yeah, it's got a dead mess to it. All right, let's exit out of here. Go to engine. Let's go to data. Let's go to misfire data. Cylinder number two is misfiring. See that the counts keep climbing. All right, so it's a dead mess. All right, let's get this in the shop. Cylinder five has some misfires. Whenever you see small misfires like this, like two, whatever, ignore them for right now. The reason being is another cylinder like this one, cylinder two misfire, Depending on the orientation or the balance of the motor, you could set random misfires on other cylinders. Don't start chasing those until you fix that main misfire first, because those other misfires could go away. Um, because the way it reads a misfire is off the rotation of the motor. So if the balance is off because it's misfiring, another cylinder could show a misfire even though it's not. So just something to keep in mind. All right, let's get this in the shop. And what we're gonna do first is, we're going to take a look and see what the plug looks like and maybe the coil. Maybe I'll just swap the coils first, see if the misfire moves. But let's get in the shop first. Okay, so in the shop, underneath the hood here, cylinder one, two, three in the back, four, five, six in the front. They do it kind of like Ford on this motor. But if it was a 3.2, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't know why they do that, but cylinder two is the center in the back. So we gotta take this engine cover off. So 
It's got these little plastic widgets down there to hold it in place. Gotta get a screwdriver in there. Just rotate those um, 90 degrees and it should unlatch. And then this cover will come off. So let me put you in a holder here so you can actually watch this. should be able to watch me at least do some of it but it's going to be a little bit of a pain let me shut this light off on here save some of my battery in this thing uh, let me get the tools that I need I'm gonna need a 10 millimeter uh, to get the coil off the coil is like I said in the back there so that's two but for me to get back there and try to film can't do it sorry All right, let me get some tools All right, so let's reach back there. This is mostly going to be done by feel. Now this is just a 10 millimeter deep on a quarter drive ratchet. All right, so there the nut is off. I'm going to lift up on the coil. I'm going to unplug it. Inspect the coil. I don't really see anything wrong with it. So I think the next step is we're going to pull the spark plug out. So let me get some tools for that. All right, so here we have 5 8 socket. If you're doing this, try to have a locking extension. The reason being, unless you have a deep, long socket. The reason being is because when you go to take this off, sometimes this, the uh, socket will actually get stuck on a spark plug and then you're trying to fish it out of the hole and it becomes a real pain in the neck So in this way too, because sometimes you got to assemble them and disassemble them as you're going into the hole So at least this allows you to Get everything apart easy All right, so we're down on there I want to get a general look at the spark plug, see what it looks like. And see how bad it actually looks. So, let's see. It's almost out. It's a coming, it's a coming, it's a coming. All right. So now I probably have to take the extension off in the car. And I did. So as you can see, the plug itself is fouled, but it's not horrendous. So I'm going to actually throw the plug back in for right now, and I'm going to swap coils. I don't see any crack, cracks or anything in it, so let me throw this back in. And then like I said, we're just going to swap coils. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the socket net right above the hole there so I can get the extension in place. I'm still going to want to change the plugs, but at least this way I can see is the coil going to straighten this out or not. Because I still don't know what's going to straighten out the issue. But the fact that it looks like it's fouled that tells me the injector should be working. So now we'll tighten that up. Okay. So then, natural, without the plug, I have enough room to get the extension in that out. 
So now let me pull off the number one coil. I have to find the nut. It's right there. At least this way I can pull this out. And now I can swap it with number two. I'm just going to give a quick, general, quick look. And that looks fine. Dropping it in place. Hook the connector up. You don't even have to put that nut on. That nut, you know, for testing purposes, that is. That nut is not like a grounding point or anything. It's just to hold the coil in place. So let's get this back on here. And that coil's on. All right. So now with that being said, I should be able to see if the misfire is still in the same spot. Because if the misfire is in the same spot, then i got to look elsewhere. So let's start this up and let's see where the misfire is. So like I said, I don't know. Still showing cylinder two. All right. So now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to swap spark plug one and two. Why didn't I do that before? Because then I wouldn't know is it the spark plug or the coil. If this was an easier to one to work on, I would have pulled out cylinder three, swapped plug two and two to three, and then swapped coil two to one. You follow? So this way I could see wherever it moved to. So now, let's do that. Let's just swap those plugs. All right, before I do any of that swapping plugs, I'm actually going to put a spark tester on there. I want to make sure that I have spark. Now what this does is this end goes in a coil, and this end I'm going to put to ground. I just want to make sure that the coil can produce a spark. So I'm pop this out. And we're going to see if I can, in fact, make a spark. There. And I could go to the plug, too, but I actually prefer to do it this way. So let's start this up and see what we got. And as you can see, I have a spark. Uh, in the video, it may show erratic, but it is a steady pulse. So now all I'm going to do is I am going to swap the spark plugs, because if you recall on my own van, I had that situation where the one spark plug was bad creating a misfire. So let's get that swapped over real quick. Here it is, just unscrewing all of this. So this is going to be cylinder one. This is what I hate about this design, is you have a tendency to get your tools stuck in there, like I just did. So I'm just going to grab a shorter extension to drop down in the hole. fighting with me. I don't know why. No, there it doesn't go. Right, come on, there we go. That's 
fought me a little bit, and I don't know why, but there, hopefully you can see that, that plug. That one looks good. So now we're just going to swap that with the other one in there, and just let's see how that one comes out. And this one I can get the longer extension in without an issue. this out. And see how this comes out. So. Let's see how this is coming. This one, once you have the plug in there, you have to take the extension off. All right, so that's out, and obviously this plug is fouled, and I don't think I have any plugs here that are the same, so we're just going to swap this over. What I should do is, while this thing's apart, I should throw a compression gauge in there and just see how that comes out. All right, let me tighten that up. Hang on one second. All right, so here we have our compression gauge. My, I've had this thing for, shoot, 40 years now, I think. It's ancient. I've had this thing a long time. Um, needed a special adapter for this style plug. Um, I believe I needed this for Chrysler 36 when I worked at the dealer. You screw the one end in, and you just do it by hand. There's no um, external tool required, like a socket, to work it. Now we just want to make sure that we have some reasonable compression here. Now yes, it is going to start, it's going to run for a split second, I don't care about that, but it should be able to make at least 100 PSI, I would think. So there, I don't know if you can see the gauge. Let me zoom in on it a little bit while I do this. Okay, like I said, I'm going to start it off for a split second, shut it down, so let's see what happens. So what did we wind up with? <laughs> right at 100. So like I said, should be right at least 100. So with 100, mm, it's not the greatest, but it could be because the cylinder walls are wet, stuff like that from fuel. So let's swap this. Well, we already did swap that one spark plug. Let's put this plug in and let's see what happens. Let's get the tool off of there. Now, also, these compression gauges, you gotta be careful. Because if you leave them in there while it's running, what can happen is you can burn up the Schrader valve that's in the end of the tool. And I've done it myself several times. But in the end here, see that little Schrader valve? And that's not a regular Schrader valve for like a tire or whatever. There's no spring with that. So it's just like, it's weighted so it holds it open because it's facing down. Now, if you had a situation where it goes in this way, I don't know how it would actually work. It would have to have like a super light spring, but it, does, it doesn't have that. It's just kind of like weighted. So, all right, let's swap the plugs. And then we can see if the misfire actually moves or what happens. using two shorter extensions was going to be a little bit easier for the back here so that's what I did I still have a longer one up on the cowl there Like I said, you don't have to catch the nut on there. Just make sure that that thing's pushed all the way down. 
All right, let's go in the car. Okay, so back inside. Now, if this misfire is still on cylinder two, I'm gonna verify what I have seen. Nope, see, it's on cylinder one now. And cylinder number two is actually cleared up. See that? Okay. So it's just a bad spark plug. So we're gonna put a set of spark plugs in this. Now, what I was gonna say is, because I've run into this before, with the firing order being one, two, three on the one bank and uh, four, five, six on the other bank, according to all that and stuff like that, I've run into that where the diagrams are wrong. And what I what I would do is, just to be on the safe side, I would disconnect another coil just to see where that misfire shows up. And that would tell me, okay, if I disconnected, say, what I think is cylinder three, and all of a sudden it comes up and says that's cylinder six, well, then I know, or cylinder five, then I would know, well, hey, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, go on opposite banks, like what a three, two is. So I just wanted to make sure that that was correct, because I've, like I said, I've run into that before where sometimes stuff is different. Like Ford 302s, the old 302s, um, like in the 90s, you had an HO302 and you had a um, non HO302. Firing orders were different between the two motors. So, yeah, so, same cylinder bank layout, but the firing orders were different. So, just that's all, that's all I'm throwing out there just to make sure. So, yay, let me get a set of spark plugs for this thing. And usually with a misfire like this, let's see, 113,240. I don't remember what the mileage was. Just looking at the oil change sticker. All right, so it's actually due for an oil change. Because with a misfire like that, too, what happens is you contaminate the oil. I don't know how long they were driving it like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a set of spark plugs in this thing. We're going to get it running, get it hot. I'm going to probably test drive it. And at the end, I'm going to probably change the oil, too, just to be on the safe side. The compressor's running. I'm sure you can hear that. So, all right, yay. Let's get a set of spark plugs. Okay, so while I'm waiting for parts, I'm going to pull the spark plugs out, the rest of them. So let's do that. Holder here. So, you guys want to see this, so I'm going to show you. I mean, unfortunately, I can't get down and dirty and you know, show you right inside, but I can get you close. Actually, let me get a pair of gloves on. Hang on one second. All right, let's go here. Now, if I remember correctly, this last one, number three, is the hardest one because you got the cooler tubes in the way. So right now, just getting the nut off the coil. Trying to lift up on the coil to get it out of there. It is not cooperating. There it goes. Now, on the last one here, to try to finagle this thing out, you got to take the wire off. Because otherwise, it just will not come out. Take the wire off, and then you have to rotate the coil. I don't know if you can see this, you probably can't. You got to rotate the coil inside those. Uh, cooler tubes in the back. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the coils just to get them out of my way so I'm not fighting with them. Alright, let's pull the plugs out. Now, if you had any old worn out extensions that won't stay connected in a situation like this, that's when they come in handy. Because sometimes trying to separate the 
extensions in the back there can be a real pain on the neck. So there's one. As you saw, I break them free, and then they usually will spin out by hand. There's two. Now three is a pain, because like I said, those cooler tubes, you gotta work between them. And it can be a fight to line everything up. And this is where you have a tendency to drop things. And then you wind up saying bad words. And then you're not happy. And also here, I'm going to get a even shorter extension on there. Hang on one second. All right, I got a shorter extension like that. I can honestly say these Hondas are not my most favorite vehicles to work on. I think they kind of made them ridiculously difficult to work on, but then again, these are not more difficult than others, and some are even worse. Sometimes I'd rather remove an intake to get the plugs out and then go through all of this. Now this one I could feel is a little tight and it keeps ratcheting the ratchet. And this is a very fine tooth ratchet. If it didn't ratchet it, then I know it's loose enough for me to take it out with my fingers. Like I said, you got to fight this in between those cooler hoses in the back to get the plug out. All right, so now let's move to the front ones. And now for the front ones, I'm going to move you over here. Unfortunately, you're going to have a tough time seeing this. But what I'm going to do is let me go get a, uh, one of my little lights that I like so much. And we're going to watch me do that. Now here it is, here's my Cyclops light. Like I've said in the past, I absolutely love these things. These things work fantastic. So, I'm gonna put it there. And let me see how that light works for you in a second here. Well, maybe I can move this bottle out of the way. Oh yeah, look at that. Just trying to be video friendly. So how does that work for you? All right, let's. Okay, well you can't see absolutely everything, but you can get a good idea of what I'm doing. All right, so first we're gonna take the three nuts off the coils. And the joy of this side is everything's really close to the fans. So you gotta fight with that. Right. Pop the coils up and out. You gotta disconnect these. The harness is definitely not long enough. And all there is is a tab to push down on. 
to release it. If they don't want to release, try pushing them back in first before pushing on the tab. Now this one's a real pain because you've got to really rotate it to get it out. All right, so now, spark plugs. The last one on this side is a real bugger. Let me tell you. It goes. And you have to put the extension up into the fan blades to get the darn things, darn plugs out. And it's a matter of figuring out the right length of everything to make it get in there. Now you guys said you wanted to see longer videos watching me do everything, so this is, this is like the first one I'm doing like this, so this is going to be a longer video. So hopefully you like it. Hopefully it comes out the way I want it to. Like I said, if you had a worn out extension where the ball is, you know, won't hold or it's broken or whatever, hold on to them, don't throw them out. Because in a situation like this, they would come in super handy. I don't have any. Because most of these are snap-on, and of course they warranty them, so if they break, I just replace them. But I'll be honest with you, it's rare that they actually break. The heater just turned on. Let's turn that off. So I do not want the heater running. I run hot personally. I always have. You can ask Mrs. Wrenching. She said it's like sitting, it's like laying next to a lava stone when we go to bed. But I've always run hot, just how I am. Even my grandkids, they'll come up and they'll hug me and they're like, oh, you're so warm. <laughs> to this shortly okay so here we have the new spark plugs customer supplied them the customer actually works at the parts store so that's why the customer supplied them because usually we don't like to install customer supplied parts I did put a dab that's just a little teeny tiny dab on each plug of some copper paste that I have now I did not check the gap yet but I'm telling you I normally wouldn't even bother looking across these plugs they look all about the same and normally, I wouldn't even bother. I know they're supposed to be about 40. 39 to 43 is the actual spec. They could have been 50, I would have been fine with it. It's not that critical. Like, if they're at 40 and it's supposed to be 43, you know, you don't have to open them up to 43. It's not, oh my God, the car's not gonna run right. You know, don't worry about that. It, it's not that critical, I've said it before. Let me show you something. All right, so let me just put you in my little holder here. This way you can watch me put the plugs in. Here's a plug gapper. Now, you don't want to drag the tip of the plug through the gapper. 
that's where it stops a little over 40. so that's good that's fine that's perfect that's where it's staying all of them are like that we are not checking the gap on any of them it's perfect no need to worry no need to get all bent out of shape about it so let's start putting plugs in you can watch me do this so hopefully you guys are liking this longer video like this <clears throat> putting the plugs up and out of the way i'm gonna do one plug at a time obviously can't do two at a time that'd be really difficult can you see that okay let me see well hopefully you can all right uh ooh, let me get my ratchet real quick I was in the middle of another job that I did not film, and I took the ratchet away. All right. Spark plug in the socket. And this is where it gets a little tricky, and I just hit the light. I know that. Don't drop the plugs down the hole. I mentioned that before, because I've seen people do that. They'll drop the thing down there, and I've actually seen plug gap close up from doing that. So all I'm doing is screwing this in by hand. And when you have arthritis, your hands tend to cramp up after a while. So sometimes this can be a little bit of a pain. I prefer not to use any type of a power tool on here like I have you know, electric ratchets and stuff like that, the Milwaukee's. I prefer not to. Okay, now, I can feel it just, I can feel the gasket just crushing. So now, that's roughly a quarter turn. And you feel the gasket finalize its crush, and you feel it stop. At that point, stop! You don't have to go any tighter. That's perfect. Okay, next plug, same thing, got to feed it back, back of the extension through the fan and then get the plug in place. Screw it down by hand. About as far as I can go by hand. And there I can feel the gasket starting to crush, because these do have crushed gaskets. And then about a quarter of a turn, and then you feel the plug pretty much coming to a stop, meaning all the crush is going in the gasket. Stop. You do not have to go any further. Okay, I'll take the last one for this side. Be careful as you're doing this, because I'm taking the extension and I'm going up into the uh, between the cooling fan blades, be careful so you don't smash the um, the radiator itself. I've seen people do that too when they do it themselves at their house, and they are not to be touching cars, but if they do, and I've seen people do it. I've seen other mechanics do it that shouldn't be touching cars. So there again, just bringing it down until I feel that there, the gasket just started touching, and then about a quarter of a turn. And it, it pretty much stops. And don't go any further. Okay. All right, so we take that off of there. Now we're going to feed the coils in. The first one, or the last one, is a little tricky. You've got to get it just right because it fits in between the two fans. Push it, up, push it down. Next one's a little bit easier. Hook the connector up. I don't know if you can hear the clicking of the connector when I do that. You listen carefully. Click. Okay. And it's down. So now I'm going to catch the nuts on top. 
because now that I'm done, now you put the nuts back on. Like I said, for testing purposes, when I was swapping coils and plugs and stuff like that, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have them bolt, them down, bolt it down. They can free float. This is just to prevent them from working their way out while driving down the road. Although like Volkswagens, Volkswagens don't bolt their coils down. They're a tight fit. So they go by basically like a, a friction fit or interference fit maybe is what it's supposed to be called. So there, tight. You don't have to go bananas tightening it up. Let me put this bottle back. So now we're gonna move to the back. What you're going to be able to see back there like i said it's pretty dark <clears throat> all right so number three is the most difficult on this shorty extension on there in a second because this is this extension winds up just above the valve cover so it could be a real pain in the neck trying to tighten it if you don't have the height of this little extension and of course any combination of extensions you need to use to make your job easier to make the job work for you you know whatever you got to do This job is a little more advanced for beginners, maybe. So there, I felt the gas could crush. Obviously, I can't go a full swing. And there, I feel it's tight. I'm done. I'm not going any tighter. Now you got to disassemble everything as you come out. OK. So that's one. On to the next one. Now this one, I have a little more room for the next two. I don't remember where the portal is. So now this one I can drop in place, not drop, lay in place with the uh, two extensions together. Screw it down by hand. Some of you may have noticed I knocked a wire off of here. It's just retained on this plastic cover here. All right, yeah, that's tight. Get that off. And on to the last one. Okay, same thing down by hand. That's another thing too is when I've, I've seen them when they're easy to access, I've seen people put spark plugs in guns, you know, a 3 8 impact, and shove them down the hole and blast them in place. Great way to break a spark plug, great way to strip a cylinder head or cross thread it. Never do that. Now, obviously, I can't measure a quarter of a turn because I can only go so many degrees here, but I can feel when the crush stops and it stopped. All right. So they are all in place. So now let's get the coils in. And this one, like I said, you've got to feed in between these pipes here. Get it just right. Get it down in place. Connect the connector. 
and then you can feel the stud come up through the hole in the coil. These last two are much easier. Come on. Make sure I don't have this upside down. I do have it upside down. Okay. I had the connector upside down. There we go. In place. Last one. So let's catch the three nuts. Now, when you're done doing a job like this, when you've had a misfire, when you first start it up, wait a little bit before you determine if you still have a misfire. Because you can still have a misfire for a period of time. Because the cylinder walls could be washed with fuel, um, oil, stuff like that. And it may take a little bit for it to fire off again. On some vehicles, if it's had a misfire, it'll actually shut the injector off after a period of time. So, and that's to help prevent catalytic converter um, destruction. So, if let's say you don't have a code scanner to clear the codes, and you didn't disconnect the battery, it may take a few seconds for it to clear up and, and allow the injector to come back on. It is, and now it's in place. Okay. Let me shut this down. All right, let me move my tools over here real quick. You don't want to forget your tools on a cowl. I can't tell you how many times I've found tools on the cowl of a car. And I'm sure I've left tools there too. Let me just put these away. Hang on a second. So, we can put the cover in that back on, but I'll wait a second. Let's start this up. Oh yeah, she's smooth. Like I said, you could see some misfires. No, it's actually cylinder one, two. See that? You may see it, but you got to take it out and blow it out. So I am good with that, and the car is not shaking anymore. All right, let's go put that engine cover back on. Actually, let's clear these codes. Some cars you can have running, some cars you cannot. Let's go back here. We're gonna gonna go. To, we're gonna gonna go. We're gonna go here and clear all the codes read by the code scan. So this could take a few seconds. Let's let that go on. Let's put that engine cover on. You don't have to sit there and watch that whole thing. My six liter project. My eight point eight project. We're gonna narrow that rear. I bought a plasma cutter, so. All right. Hope you guys are looking forward to that when I do the uh, project stuff, because that's gonna be starting up soon. All right, let's get this cover on. All right, I just laid it down in place. Now the back of it goes into these little divots here, but sometimes you may wanna take the rubber grommets off of like this here. I'll take the rubber grommets off, stick them down in place there. It just makes your life easier if you do it this way first. Screwdriver, lock our front. Get in place. All right. 
close the hood, we're going to go on a road test, and then I'm going to take it back and I'm going to change the oil. All right, so the codes are all cleared. Yes. I'm going to go to engine. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Let's shut this off, back on. All right, let's go for a road test. We're not going to worry about those cat codes that I had. Remember that? So cat efficiency codes, we're not going to worry about that just yet. We'll see. Although, misfire really is not going to affect that. But you never know. So let's take it for a ride. All right, so we just finished the road test. Everything went smooth. Runs great. So now we're going to change the oil. Like I said, it was due for an oil change anyway. But a lot of times when you have a car that's misfiring that badly for any period of time, you wind up getting raw fuel in the oil. So you'd want to change it anyway. So let me just get this thing set up. And then we're going to go through an oil change. How's that sound? Hope you guys like this. You guys asked for longer videos. So this is a long video. All right, so we're under the hood. I got my oil cap. I stuck it right here at my hood latch. There's my dipstick. I usually leave it sticking up. This way I remember it, just in case. Just in case I get called off the car and somebody else winds up with it. They see the dipstick like that, it usually makes them think. Now, as far as that goes, I've had somebody, a couple people have commented, oh, I wonder how many people have destroyed their cap by leaving it there listening to this guy. If you're that dumb and you leave your cap there, you deserve it. So I'm going to leave it. Okay, let's put this up in the air. Let's drain it Okay, so here we are underneath the car. Got my drain pan right there. My drain buddy, whatever you want to call that thing. Uh, so let's pull the drain plug out. The 17 millimeter. It wasn't ridiculously tight, which is good. And now you always want to change your oil too when it's at least warm, you know, like you would just run it because that circulates any junk that's in it. It's in the engine and it helps keep it suspended in the oil while you're draining it. That should help a little bit. So we'll let that drain. Move the drain out of the way a little bit. <coughs> So, but now, when you're underneath the car, or while you're doing that, now's a good time. Check your tire pressures. Check your brakes. Just give it a quick once over. You know, are we leaking anything? Uh, is anything awry? How are the tires? What's the condition of the tires? You know, the tires are in pretty good shape. You know, not perfect, but they're not bad. Um, you know, but how do the brakes look? If you even have a question on the brakes, pull the wheels off. Don't just guess. Don't sit there and say, oh, yeah, it needs brakes. I've seen that happen too many times. And when I had apprentices, they, I, I've seen some of them do that. They were like, oh yeah, it needs brakes. Oh yeah, how'd you tell? You didn't pull a wheel off, pull a wheel off, pull a wheel off, it doesn't need brakes. Oh, yeah, that aggravates me. So that was a great time to, like I said, check tires and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do that, give a quick once over, and then we're gonna put this drain plug in and we're gonna change the filter. All right, I still got the engine oil dripping out, but I moved the drain over a little bit because I realize I could take the filter off. Hopefully I can get it by hand. And yes, I can. Oh, good. Somebody wasn't an animal. I always like that. Some people aren't absolute animals when they tighten up oil filters because that's completely unnecessary. And now, I don't know if you can actually see the dripping. No, you might not be able to. The engine oil dripping right here. It actually started coming out more just now as I got the filter off. If you're dealing with a cartridge filter, especially a cartridge filter that's on top of the motor, you have to take the cartridge filter out first before you drain the oil. Because it holds oil. I'm going to show you that next time I get a Chrysler 3.6 in with a cartridge filter. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't take the filter out first. All right, so new filter. Now, here's a point of contention with a lot of people. It's dry, okay? However, the surface up there, it has oil on it. 
as you're putting the filter up in place, oops, let's get this. As you're putting the filter up in place, it's going to move the oil and get it around and on the seal. I never, almost never, put oil on the seal. See now, I can actually still tighten it and I kind of go to that point and that's good. Leave it, you're done. You don't have to go any more than that. Wipe off the excess oil. You don't want to be sloppy. You want to do a nice neat job. Make sure that the filter itself is clean because you will get oil from up around the edge. And now we can put the drain plug back in. I've still got a little bit of oil dripping out, but you can sit, this thing will drip out, it'll drip out for days. So you don't have to go bananas trying to get every single last drop out because you never will unless you disassemble the motor. down by hand and tight that's it that's all you gotta do you don't have to go nuts that's it it's nice and tight and we're good to go no I did not change the seal on there the seal looks fine the seal tightens good I am not worried about it some people say oh you got to change it no you don't have to change it look at it if it looks okay you know that's one thing and which this looks fine it's a it's a aluminum gasket aluminum crush gasket it looks fine it tightened fine i guarantee you there's not going to be any issues with it um if you have a paper gasket or you have a rubber gasket that um is coming apart yes change it use your brain look at it uh, okay so we're going to let this thing down now um i set the tires to 36 they were all at 28 so i set them all to 36 we're all good there so now let's let it down and put oil in it. All right, so we got our funnel in place. This thing holds four and a half quarts. I got four and a half quarts at 520 here. It's such a small tipped funnel that you got to be careful so you don't overflow the funnel itself. Like to catch the oil so it doesn't drip onto the motor, or rather drip into the rag of the motor. Put our oil fill cap back on. Okay, that's all good. Washer fluid's already full, so I don't have to worry about that. Check your other fluid levels; they're all good. So now, hang on one second. I always like to shine a light on things, make sure that I didn't possibly spill or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start it up, let it build up oil pressure. And then we're going to check the oil. I apologize for the chime. Oops. As you see, oil life in the center of 100. I already did that. All right. So that should be good. 
also verify you know how many leaks on the ground because you never know i've seen leaking oil filters brand new oil filters that leak so now hold the dipstick wipe it down reinstall pull it back out and that was four and a half, and it's up right in the middle. So I'm good with that. Perfect. Sometimes oil's so darn clean you can't see it. But that's pretty much it. So I'm not even sure how long this video is going to be, but it's going to be a long video. So hopefully you got something out of that. If you like the longer format, of course not every video is going to be a long video. If you like the longer video like this, let me know. Um, so that's pretty much it. Just gonna close the hood and put a lube sticker on it and give it back to the customer. All right, hopefully, you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.